on DVD. Own the suspense action thriller today. The Golden Driller playing to Tulsa's long used nickname as the oil capital of the world. It is time for the rematch. In this case, better late than never. The unconventional fan favorite, Emmanuel Augustus, he looks to avenge his most outrageous night on the wrong side of bad breaks. He takes on the former top 10 contender, Courtney Burton. Who would have known how big of a role referee Dan Kelly would play that night? Burton Augustus, early rounds, when Augustus was dominating. He got off to a very strong start, thanks to his hand speed and that unique style. In round four, Augustus would land two clean body punches. Watch the delayed reaction by Burton. The second was on the belt line. Dan Kelly said it was a low blow, so there was no knockdown. Onward to round eight we go. Burton pummeled Augustus with three illegal punches to the back of the head. Yet Kelly does nothing to Burton and scolds Augustus. Then in the ninth round, the piece de resistance, when Augustus spins out of a clinch, Kelly deducts a point and doesn't really properly explain why. Turn it around, Frank, back the guy. He did what? He turned around, back the guy. He turned around? He flipped him around. So Kelly mistakenly said the opposite of what actually took place. No denying Teddy's scorecard. The scorecard that was actually read was incorrectly read. Scores about 97-92. Judge Robert Peganelli scores about 99-90. And Judge Jack Richards scores about 98-94 for a split decision. The winner from Benton Harbor, well, Michigan. Well, wait a minute here. First of all, wait a minute. Wait a minute. First of all, this is terrible. This is disgraceful. It was ruled a split decision for Burton. One judge had it 99-90. A Michigan official further complicated things, but Teddy tried to set him straight. No, it's only a majority decision if there was an even score. There's no even score here. You're an official, right? You're an official of the state. Well, then you don't understand how to score. You're, because you're, this is not the way you have it here. It's a split decision. It's not a majority decision. A majority decision, you're wrong. All right? All right, you understand that you're wrong. This official here in Michigan is telling me, and he's admitting that he's wrong. Can we fix this now? Because the wrong guy got the decision. That was July 6, 2004, two years, one month, 25 days later. Here is Emmanuel Augustus. And as required, every time you introduce him, two things we got to say. First of all, he did legally change his name. He was Emmanuel Burton. That's the guy that took, play, took part in the fight of the year against Mickey Ward. And don't pay any attention to the 27 losses. Look at his last five, three and two in that span, two close losses. Had Herman Nagojo down in the 12th round, and most observers thought he won against Maru. Burton is now 26 years old, 21 wins, five losses. His slate of his last five fights includes the fight with Augustus, but he was knocked out three straight times most recently against good competition, though. Now the focus is this fight, but still it's tough for either man to escape the circumstances surrounding July 2004. No doubt in my mind that I knew I won that first fight. This guy getting knocked out. He got knocked out last fight, but the referee from Michigan picked him up. So I don't think that the that the that the referee from uh, from Oklahoma gonna pick him up. Oh, this is very important to me. You know, I know I I I, I, I know that I want to prove to myself. I know I can beat Augustus. You know, I I, I got to have this win. I can prove this to myself. And what excuse he gonna have for this time when he get knocked out? So. That's all. And if he don't get knocked out, he's going to get embarrassed, so I don't know which one is worse, you know? Better yet, I think I'd just rather embarrass him, but I really want to knock him out. I have nothing against Augustus. It's just a business thing, y'all. You, you may have know that. It's a business thing. You know, ain't got no grudge against Augustus. Augustus is Augustus going to be Augustus, point blank. However many rounds we're going, I don't even know. I don't care. He's not going to see the last round. I'm gonna do my damnedest to make sure of that. And if he does, I guess I have to pat him on the back for surviving the ass with him. But that's definitely what he's gonna get. Protect yourself at all times.
times. Gary Ritter's Obey the referee. My commands. Both your trunks are good. Touch your gloves. Let's have a good fight. And let Thank me you. be the one to tell Emmanuel Augustus it is scheduled for 10 rounds. Let's see if he can keep his promise. The ring experience, Emmanuel Augustus has fought world champions, top contenders. This is his 66th pro fight. And Teddy, of course, he's fought overseas. He's fought on short notice. He's fought no matter what the circumstances. And he's always competitive. And he's always exciting. And Burton has been knocked out in his last week fights. And I'm not sure he should be fighting. Took many punches, was involved in a brutal war with Ebo Elba. Who was not a big puncher, and he was knocked out in that fight. I just hope Burton is okay. We'll see. All those fights for Augustus, all that experience, not a first round knockout to his credit. Burton's a 10 year pro, was ranked among top 10 lightweights back in 2003 2004. The legs of Burton to me do not look fresh or sturdy. They don't look like the legs of a man who can absorb punches but before the night's over. I would guess that Burton will have to absorb punches. The rematches this is as you chronicled very well Joe. Miscarriage of everything in that last one not just the final score by the judges but the behavior the actions of the referee hindering Augustus all night long. Augustus has lost two of his last four, but when he loses, almost always decisions, and as we chronicle, almost always to top fighters. Tries to come back with a right hand against the jab of Augustus. Augustus in and out. The options. The diversity belongs to Augustus. He can go, as you said, Joe, in and out, side to side. He can fight with you in the trenches. He can look to counter on the outside. Burton, not that many choices. Right in front of you, whatever he's going to get done, he's going to get done in that lane in the middle. He's had success with the left hand here in this final minute of this first round. Just misses with the right hand. And there's a counter left hook against the right hand of Courtney Burton. Now jabs to the body. Again, nothing has really stop, touched stop, break, step Burton back, step yet. Back, both nothing of significance. Box. But I still feel that the foundation of Burton, the foundation of any fighter, those legs, to me, still a little suspect. He's been turning over a lot of miles on that fighter odometer. Coming to the end of round number one. When success is real. Round two, it was back in July 2003 that Courtney Burton had his coming out party, his career best win, when he TKO'd Angel Manfredi. Then a year later, the controversial win against Emmanuel Augustus, and now two years later, the rematch against Emmanuel Augustus. Burton is in the purple and gold, the veteran Augustus in the blue and white, scheduled for 10. Augustus should give Watch angles, I believe, my humble opinion, to Burton, because Burton can only do anything offensively if you're right in front of him. He needs to be set on those shaky legs, at least shaky legs in my eyes. He needs to be set on them to pitch back. Augustus has the ability to pitch from angles, from the side, from all over the ring. And he should use that ability. Get on the side of Burton, not allow Burton to fire, and then Augustus can have his way. Let those hands go. No worry about anything coming back. You can see right now Augustus is doing a good job of turning Burton, keeping him a little bit off balance offensively, where Burton cannot answer. Joe so again gets to the inside, and Augustus was able to fire off a right hand. When Burton's coming in, he's a little top heavy, reaching a little bit, leaning a little bit, letting his upper body get ahead of his legs, giving a chance to Augustus 
to counter as he comes forward, pick him off as he comes in. Augustus now starting to crank things up a bit. He will let things go. He'll let loose. That's what he loves to do. Right now, quicker hands, obvious. They belong to the man in blue, Augustus. But not only quicker hands, quicker legs, just more sprighty, energetic body overall. You can see Burton is comfortable switching to the southpaw stance as he does now. Seen that time and time again in his career. He will switch. Now he goes back for orthodox. Again, the only time Burton pitches at you offensively is when you're right in front. If you go straight back, anytime Augustus gives angles, he's going to control that ring. Burton is just not able to throw back when Augustus gives any movement. Right hand went to the body. You can see every once in a while. Burton tries to go to the body on the inside. Some good work inside by Burton, but then when he steps back, you can see he bounces up and down like he's trying to put life in those legs. That's a chance for Augustus to jump on him. Like right hand right there. by Emmanuel Augustus to close out the second round. You know, I mean, I mean, one closer look at Emmanuel 20, 20, Augustus. 20, 20, 20. Hey, you watch ESPN yeah, Classic okay. enough, you will inside, see that 2001 fight of the year against moment, Mickey okay? Ward. Moment, so proud of inside. his family, okay. his okay. daughter okay. Genesis, okay. and his okay. little boy Emmanuel okay. Augustus the okay. second. And okay. there is Courtney okay. Burton started boxing at a eight up in Michigan. Had two am 200 amateur bouts, and really peaked as a pro when he slept. In the gym at Chicago's Windy City Gym and dedicated himself to come up with that career win against Angel Manfredi that really put him on the map. Starts off this third round with that exchange. Take a look at the punch track numbers. These are the headshots in round number two. And keep in mind the jabs are included in that number. And Augustus was 30 of 64, landing 47%. You showed on that yes, some there of the showboating of Augustus, but you showed on that fight of focus the 200 amateur bouts of Burton. That is part of the reason why I'm concerned about Burton and his condition physically as a fighter. Being knocked out four of his last five, add to it those 200 amateur fights, as you said earlier, a lot of miles on that odometer, and you don't judge a fighter by his chronological age, Burton only 28 years old chronologically, but you judge him by the amount of punches they've taken, how many fights they've had, amateur and pro, Burton's had a lot. Again, Burton every once in a while will step out and reset himself and just bounce up and down, Joe, like he's trying to get some life in those legs. While he's bouncing up and down, you can see it right in front. That's a good opportunity for Augustus to jump in and take advantage because while Burton bouncing, He's not set to defend, he's not set to punch. He's out of position. Good combination moments ago from Augustus. The left came in, then the right hand. Tried to fire off the uppercut, just missed. But as you talked about, Burton being top heavy, that may be a punch that develops and creates an opportunity for Emmanuel Augustus. Counter opportunities are gonna definitely be available for Augustus on the back end when he steps out, as you just talked about right there. Burton will lean forward a little bit as he comes in. His upper body, now he's turning southpaw again. His upper body gets ahead of his lower body, ahead of that foundation, and he leaves himself out of position and wide open at a distance for counters. Augustus just took one to give back three. Now squared up right on the inside. Again, the only time Burton has offensive moments is when Augustus stands right in front of him. That's when Burton can get off a little bit, but he cannot adjust. He cannot adjust to movement from Augustus. Well placed right hand. Burton's been coming forward for the past minute. Augustus has been playing into it. Now here they are, head to head, shoulders to shoulders.
Coming to the end of round three, Augustus and Burton on Friday Night Fights. Thursday, September 21st. Whose panties are on? Drink responsibly. With one, two free, earn one free rental day when you make two qualifying rentals. Visit nationalcar.com for details. Now, there hasn't been a fighter in recent times who's had more questionable and controversial circumstances in the ring that have gone against him, quite like Emmanuel Augustus. And tonight he gets to avenge probably the most well-documented of those such occurrences. And as always, he does it with style. Round number four, Emmanuel Augustus turning on the showboat bids. What you see right there is part of the reason why Burton, if he is damaged physically, as I think he may be, it's part of the reason why Burton may be able to have moments and at least survive rounds with Augustus, who's a good fighter, but not a good finisher. He will flash at moments, but then there will be moments where he will take himself out of that flash, as you saw at the beginning of the round. He won't stay on an opponent and finish the job too often. He'll catch you good shots like he's doing right now, but then he'll go into these antics and allow you to survive or to recover. Not a finisher. That's not part of the temperament of Augustus. So in that way, Burton has served well that he will get chances to do that, to recover and retaliate. If Augustus was the kind of guy that just sits down in the kitchen, gets inside on you, and does not come off that gas pedal, maybe Burton would have larger problems tonight. It's a little more conventional. Lands a one-two. Burton now on the inside, three consecutive left hands. Don't push. Again, the only push. place where Burton can do anything, I think, whether it's from the lefty stance that he's in now or the orthodox stance of the right-hander, the only time he can do anything is when Augustus accommodates him by standing in front. Burton not good at moving his feet and punching when you give him angles. Switches back, lefty to righty again does Burton. Final minute of the fourth round. Again, Augustus lands in spots, but then in spots he disengages and allows Burton to recover in spots. You know, we're talking about Burton being knocked out four of his last five. That's one of the reasons why I'm concerned about him being in the ring. Usually, part of that history lately... Watch your hands, watch your hands. And we'll see if it's consistent here tonight, Joe, has been that... He gets hurt late. He gets damaged in parts early, and then he gets hurt late in fights and really starts to fade physically. Stop, 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 stop. Watch your shoulder. Box. A little roughhousing here at the end of this fourth round. More Augustus and Burton to come your way. Stop. Afternoon. Give me your hand. Child has vanished. Now a cop must uncover a secret. Something bad is about to happen. The under ritual that kills Nicholas Cage, the Wicker Man. Ready PG-13. Now playing. Speak to me in sense. Murmur lavender, and I'll listen. Immerse me in vanilla, and you'll soothe my soul. Introducing Tide Simple Pleasures, a new laundry detergent for a clean that refreshes and a scent that can relax so you can pull on a change of mood. Experience new Tide Simple Pleasures in vanilla and lavender, rose and violet, and water lily and jasmine. Matching scents also available in Downy Simple Pleasures. They think you're an assassin. I am being framed. He has one shot. Who sent you? To expose the truth. Post your weapon. The traitor is still out there. He's going down. The Sentinel. Own it today. Emmanuel Augustus, Courtney Burton. Round number five, scheduled for ten. Our co-feature here on Friday Night Fights. Coming up later tonight. 
The undefeated Alan Green takes on Emmett stop, Linton. Stop, stop, Teddy Atlas's scorecard. 39-38. Even first round. Second and third going to Augustus. Started to showboat in the fourth. Teddy gave it to Burton. Let's bring in the former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. Larry, as a fighter who was so fundamentally sound, especially with that solid, steady jab, what do you make of the style of Emmanuel Augustus? Well, that style might be good for him, but for me at that time, there was no play in my game. I went out there and did what I had to do. But I can understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to upset him, throw him ball, going from one hand to another hand with the switch. Uh, you know, he's he confused him a little bit, but he's playing a dangerous game. Larry, you were a fighter that punch never out, really out. wasted much. Everything you did counted. It was effective. Do you think sometimes Augustus, he's, he's very entertaining and he's effective, but sometimes he makes too many moves. He'll make a move, he'll be in good position, then he'll make an extra move and maybe wind up eating a punch because he makes more moves than he has to? Well, he'll never be able to go 15 rounds like we did back then because he make a lot of unnecessary moves, a lot of things that he shouldn't do. He should be really concentrating on getting him out of there, throwing the right punches and get him out of there so he don't have to go to them extra rounds or take those extra punches. But, you know, this is his game playing, and, and uh, maybe when his career is all over, he might regret it. Larry, I've been talking about Burton. To me, he has old legs. He looks like a guy that just isn't being supported by those legs properly. He's been knocked out in his last three fights. Do you think there's ever a time in boxing where a fighter should just be retired for his own good? I think so, because especially if you get knocked out of your last three fights, you know, fighting is not easy. It takes a toll on you, and a lot of times these fighters just take these punches and they keep coming back for a few dollars. But you know what? My brains are worth more than a few dollars. So I would think the managers or the trainers could really take a good look at him and tell him to sit down a little bit or do something different than box because boxing is not an easy game to play. Well said, Larry, by a champion inside the ring and obviously outside the ring. Thank Larry you. Holmes, our in-studio guest this week, alongside Robert Forrest with Brian Kenny on assignment. And the counterpoint that Courtney Burton would say to that, to the critics okay, who, who say, yeah, you should be Stop. retired, you've taken too much punishment, is that, hey, I didn't train properly for those fights, and I was in against good guys, four of those five against Diaz, Elder, Reyes, and Lascano. But nonetheless, Teddy, it's pretty obvious to see, if you've watched him in the last three fights, how he has tailed off in his career. Better. Hard to believe that he didn't train probably for four of the last five fights. Exactly. I think it happens to a lot of guys over 50. See, I was always going. Going during the movies and hating to stand up. Going during a presentation and hating to stand out. And once I got there, I had trouble going. And I was going three times a night. I said to my doctor, I have a going problem. He said, you have a growing problem. It's not your bladder. Your prostate is growing. See, I had an enlarging prostate. My doctor prescribed Avidart. Most medicines only treat symptoms. Avidart, with time, actually shrinks the prostate and improves urinary symptoms. So I can go more easily when I need to go and go less often. Only your doctor can tell if your symptoms are from an enlarged prostate and not a more serious condition such as prostate cancer. So have regular prostate exams. Avidart is for men only. Women should not take or handle Avidart due to the risk of a specific birth defect. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease. Rarely sexual side effects, tenderness, or swelling of the breast can occur. Call your doctor to today. Avidart for your growing problem. Courtney Burton said about two months ago he turned his life around, washed his hands of all the negativity, he's been going to church, he's not running the streets any longer, and he's dedicated himself. Now he's trying to turn his boxing career around, taking on Emmanuel Augustus in a rematch of a very controversial fight that was on ESPN two years ago. Teddy Atlas's scorecard through five rounds, 48 48. You know, I think that everything's about timing. And I think right now at this time, even though I said it early on that I'm worried about Burton's physical being, having been knocked out in his last three fights, fading badly in those fights, being knocked out in very serious ways in those fights. But there are certain things that are serving him right now. Number one, there's something that's usually a negative. He's been off nine and a half months, Joe. I think that nine and a half month in activity in the case of Burton has rested him a little bit, restored him a little bit, has served him at least for tonight. 
He needed to be away from punches. Needed to be away from this business for a while. Stop, stop, Brett. Maybe refreshing a little bit by that nine and a half months in activity. Another thing that's serving him, we talked about it with Larry a little bit, the former heavyweight champion of the world. Sometimes Augustus helps you a little bit. He makes too many moves. To make a move, hit thought to his left, hit thought to his right. Instead of punching when he has you dead to right, he'll make another move, take himself out of position, not hit you, and put himself in position where you can find him. Sometimes a little too much jitterbugging by Augustus. Lunges in with a right hand. Just watch him, Joe, every once in a while. Now that was nice and clean. He got off, he got out. And that's part of what's serving Burton, even though it served Augustus to get ahead on the scorecard there. He's not a finisher. Augustus will hit you, he'll step away from you, he'll let you recover. But sometimes he'll make a move, and instead of working, he'll make an extra move and give you a chance to get off. Augustus starting to play some of the mind games now, clowning a little bit, and you just saw in that last tie up pushing back and sticking out his tongue. Stop! Stop! Burton does get involved in a lot of fights where there's head clashes. You can see he gets in there, not shy to get that shaved dome right inside. Could cause problems with cuts. Six scheduled for ten. Oh, yeah. What's true for shrimp cocktail is true for all cocktails. Always in moderation. I'm Tony Sinclair. And that's how you tank a wreck. What's that? Rabbit food? Business casual slacks? Chintz pillows? No more. Time to be a man again. And it starts in the shower. This gets you clean. And it doesn't dry your skin. Not dry. Nice. And it looks like an oil can. Yeah. New Dial for Men body wash. Michael. Be a man. Be a man. I'm a man. Take back the shower. Yes, yeah. We are in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Tulsa's very own Alan Green is getting ready for the main event on Friday Night Fights. We'll be taking on Emmett Litton. Coming up after this, our co-feature, Emmanuel Augustus and Courtney Burton, round number seven. Even if the legs are damaged, of Burton, as I suggested early on, he can still chuck at you with the upper body when Watch you stand arm, right Courtney. in front of him or go straight back. And Augustus has given him that landscape in several rounds. Augustus has not moved out of that corner for the Come first on, 30 seconds of this seventh round. He's in the blue trunks, the veteran, very unconventional fighter, unpredictable fighter. In round number six, landed 51% of his punches, but his total output has been going down in terms of the number of punches thrown per round. He was at 95 punches in the third round, 89 in the fourth, all the way down to 76 in that last round. When you use up as a fighter, stop, stop, stop. the first thing that goes is the bottom part of that body, the legs. But the upper part of that body, the arms, the upper torso, that is still okay. And again, Burton is okay when you stand right in front of him and he doesn't have to receive a lot of damage. Augustus scored very well with a left hook to the top of the head and then split the guard with two straight right hands. In the first meeting of these two, Augustus dropped Burton with a body shot, even though he didn't get credit for it by the crazy stop, stop, referee. Stop, stop, Don't push. Tonight, Augustus has not stayed to that body really much at all. Right back to that neutral corner. May as well set up a campsite there in this seventh round. Uppercuts are very available right now for Augustus. As we talked about Burton earlier, 
leaning forward with that upper body, seems to leave the legs behind, and the upper body tries to go forward. Stop, stop, stop. Both of your heads. Box. Again, too many moves by Augustus. He'll make one move, Joe, he'll be in great position to do something, and then he makes one too many moves, and when he pulls himself out, he allows Burton at spots to find him. Just allowing Burton to work a little more here now. And that southpaw stance, fired off a straight left, went to the body. Augustus with his back up against the ropes. We've said it before, right now, Augustus is like a basketball player who's dribbling the ball too much. Too many moves, not enough shooting. Needs to do more punching. Good seventh round for Burton. Time. Live Tuesday, September 12th, America, are you ready to do it? With Emmett Smith, Monique Coleman, Jerry Springer, Vivica A. Fox, Joey Lawrence, Sarah Evans, Mario Lopez, Harry Hamlin, Shayna Mokler, Tucker Carlson, and Willa Ford. Let's do it. Dancing with the Stars, two-hour premiere, Tuesday, September 12th, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. A warrior who had no equal. An enemy that conquered his homeland. And a competition that would decide the fate of a nation. You better lose this time. Our victory is guaranteed. From the producers of Hero and Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, Jet Li. Fearless. With APG 13, starts September 22nd. Three rounds to go in the rematch of what was 2004's most controversial fight. Don't push. Emmanuel Augustus, Come on, now. Courtney Listen Burton. Augustus 2-0 so far this year on ESPN. Took out Rangel and had a decision win against Martez Logan. And he's still got some work to do here against Courtney Burton. Went to the body with a left hand. Burton has five losses, all five by knockout. Usually when he does get knocked out, as we said early on, Joe, it's late in the fight. He just dissipates. He just starts losing it physically, almost like pulling the electric switch out of a light. Everything goes dark all at once. You heard how passionate and angry Emmanuel Augustus was heading into this fight. And he said that Burton would not see the final round. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 67-67. But if you are having problems physically, and that's just my assumption, doesn't have to be right. But I, if you are having problems physically, as I think Burton may have dissipated physically as a fighter with the damage he's taken lately, the best person to be in there with is a guy who's not a finisher, a guy who does not put his foot to the floor all the time. Good body shot. Right Real there. nice body shot. And then goes to the uppercut and puts a combination together that includes another body shot and a left hook. Burton will fight, or well, Gutses will fight in spots. This is a big spot. Is right it here. ever? Is it ever? He has not come off that gas pedal, and Courtney Burton goes down. Augustus, as we said two rounds ago, hurt Burton and dropped him with body shots. Well, he's hurt Burton again, and it started with the body shot, and this time he gets credit for it. And this time he gets a knockout loss or a knockout win by going downstairs. Boy, oh boy, you think that was satisfying? He turned it on in the eighth round, never stopped, and avenged what was by far the most disturbing loss in his career. We were talking about it just a moment ago. Burton knocked out four of his last five fights, knocked out in all five of his losses. And when those knockouts have come, they've usually come late in the fight, where all of a sudden, physically, everything goes. Where all of a sudden, the fight turns. The fight turns suddenly here in the eighth round. 
and it started with a good body shot from Augustus. Let's go back and see Emmanuel Augustus's finishing touches. The body shot really started things off well, Teddy. Right there, good left hand in the open area. Burton's right elbow was up, and the experienced Burton found the opening with the left hand. And this was one time, and there you could see good body work and then going upstairs by Augustus, but this was one time where Augustus stayed on top of Burton. We had talked about it earlier, Joe, where Burton was being left alone by Augustus. Augustus not really a finisher. He picks spots, he gets in, he gets out. And he'll leave you alone, and he'll let you recover in spots. But once he hurt Burton there in the eighth round, as you see the referee administering the final count, once he finally hurt Burton there, he stayed right on top of him. Instead of one punch at a time, there were bushels of punches, and Burton could not survive them. For the official particulars, let's send it up to the ring to M. Mark Fierro. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes, four seconds of the eighth round. The winner by technical knockout, Emmanuel Augustus. Emmanuel Augustus. Augustus. 33 wins, now the 18th knockout of his long and entertaining career. Let's look at the punch track fight recap brought to you by Just For Men. Emmanuel Augustus, 244 punches to the head, landing 51% of his total punches. And of course, it was the body shot that got things started to finish off Courtney Burton in round number eight. So glad you can join us here on Friday Night Fights. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you from Tulsa. It was a few weeks ago, Teddy, that you broke the story of the potential middleweight championship fight between Kasim Uma and Jermaine Taylor. Now you have more breaking news, details confirming everything. Yes, the fight is done. The fight has been made. It's going to be November 25th. It's going to be in Arkansas where of course is the home of the middleweight champion of the world Jermaine Taylor and Kasim Uman the former junior middleweight champion of the world will be going there to try to win the middleweight title the first thing I want to say is yes we talked about it we had said that this fight was in the process of being made and indeed now it has been made it should be an entertaining fight on HBO November 25th but what I want to say is I just want to give credit to Jermaine Taylor. Oh, no, you know why? Because this is a guy who took the middleweight title from a guy who set the record for a middleweight champion from Bernard Hopkins. And then he fought him a second time, beat him twice. Then he took a rest, right? No. He goes and fights Winky Wright, one of the most consistent winning fighters probably of the last decade, and one of the top five fighters around. So give a lot of credit to Jermaine Taylor. What a he stretch just, of fights. just keeps fighting the best guys out there. So give him and his team applause for me there were also some published reports uh, on the internet around the world uh, concerning you and what you're going to be doing in the offseason of Friday night fights that you turned down an offer to train again a former light heavyweight champion and Henry Musk there's an update to that story I only like kids and older people <laughs> that's all I like and I'm gonna I'm gonna prove that by working with Henry Musk the former light heavyweight champion of the world from Germany. He, of course, also won the 1980, 1988 Olympic gold medal for Germany. But he's a guy who lost one fight. That was in his last fight, as you can see in the graphic, against Virgil Hill. And then he retired for 10 years. And he's done very well. He's taken care of his money. He's got a great family. He walked away. But a funny thing happened several months ago. Virgil Hill, who continued fighting, won a title. He won a world title at Cruiserweight, and all of a sudden it bothered Mosk. He wanted one more fight, a chance for redemption. And he talked me into going along for that journey, along for that trip. So it will be, it will be um, next year, the fight will be. It will be in Germany. It will be for the Cruiserweight title that Virgil Hill wins, uh, has won. And we will start training next week in New Jersey, in Hackensack, where we will try to do something that it's pretty difficult to do. I mean, I know George Foreman came back after 10 years off, but you know what? He had about eight, nine years of fighting before he fought for the world title. Of course, Mosk is trying to do something a little different. He's 42 years old. 
He hasn't fought for 10 years. He's coming back for one shot. Win or lose, one chance. So let's see if we can do it. And you're going to be part of that history. Teddy Atlas going to train Henry Mosk. Well, we will be back and have our main event. But first, we send it back to the Friday Night Fight Studio and Robert Flores and a champ, Larry Holmes. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Teddy. Back here with former heavyweight champion Larry Holmes. Star. He is tall, strong, fast, skilled, and he carries the tag of future world champion. Will Alan Green once again live up to the hype? A new challenge is in front of him. Southpaw Emmett Litton plans on showing the young gun a few veteran tricks in our main event. Alan Green doesn't just exude confidence, he personifies it with a walk and talk that screams of winning and results that prove it true. Still, this sport is a way of testing even the most supremely confident, and that was the case this past April when underdog Donnie McCrary almost hit the jackpot. After being down and nearly out, McCrary landed the big shots that had Green struggling to survive. He did survive and more, knocking the journeyman out in impressive fashion. This past July 21st, he took out his anger on former contender participant Tony Bonsante. It was a power punching display by Green that backed up all of the pre fight smack. By the fifth round, Bonsante was battered and beaten. The TKO win had Green on the doorstep to a bigger payday. In fact, the very top super middleweights in the world are on his radar. Fights with Jeff Lacey and Joe Calzaghe were both pursued and subsequently shelved. It is Green thinking of moving on to different targets. I feel great about the status that I've reached now. It's somewhat of a gift and a curse. You know, you're starting to get uh, more notoriety. People start to know you more, but nobody wants to fight you. So I've uh, recently been contemplating actually possibly going to middleweight and, uh, you know, but if I, and I ask myself if I can't get fights at Super middleweight, how would I get fights at middleweight? But I've, I've been contemplating going to middleweight here recently. Tonight, the focus is Emmett Litton. He is a well-respected veteran who some feel may be a little long in the tooth and a little too small, but he's proven himself over a 15-year career. Two years ago, he was on Friday Night Fights against Dorian Beaupierre. He overcame a first-round knockdown to control the younger man for 10 solid rounds of action. Now, Emmett Litton goes up in weight, where he says he has more power, and of course, he still has that southpaw advantage. He hasn't been in with the southpaw, let alone a guy of, of, of my caliber, so, uh, you know, everything. He's, he's in for a long night. Uh, everything that, you know, I show him is going to be new and different. It's a big fight to me for the simple fact I'm fighting my first southpaw. If a guy's not careful, he can make you look bad. But as far as mounting any resistance against me, I doubt. But if, if you're not careful, he can make you look bad. But uh, I've, I've formulated a pretty great uh, game plan, me and John David Jackson. So we, we should get him out of there in between four and six, hopefully. I mean, if not, if, if the fight goes a distance, we're prepared for that. Good reception as always for North Tulsa's Alan Green fighting at home 26 six foot two nine years younger three inches taller than his opponent. Of course a perfect 21 and 0 15 knockouts and there are his last five fights plenty of ESPN airtime knockout of Jay Don Codrington was the knockout of the year in 2005. And Emmett Litton has traveled outside of his comfort zone in Tacoma Washington 35 years old. Spent most of his career junior middleweight. Now he comes in at a career high 166 pounds. 33 wins in his career, also 15 knockouts. The recent work, not much work because of a clash of heads causing a no contest. Only fought one round the past 15 months. Teddy Atlas is ready to deliver the fight plan. For Green to stay undefeated tonight, he's the bigger, younger fighter. He will be trying to do it against Linton, who's a much more experienced, smaller fighter, but a pretty slick fighter. And on top of it, a southpaw. Now, usually when you're fighting southpaws, you like to throw the right hand. They work against lefties. But for Green tonight, if he just chucks right hands, that's going to happen a lot. He's going to miss because you can see Linton is pretty cute. He knows how to avoid punches. 
So the key tonight, I think, is to concentrate on taking some of that slickness away from Linton. And for Green to do that, first of all, he's got to notice that 90% of the time, you can see that Linton slips to his left side. So for Green, faint a little bit like he's going to throw. Get him to slip over, bang, then chuck the right hand. Time him. So for Green to stay undefeated tonight against a smaller guy, yeah, but a very experienced, slick fighter. Faint him a little bit, throw the right hand in the right spot, keep that zero on the end of his record. For Linton to win tonight, we know he's not the bigger guy. He's small, but we also do know that he's the more experienced guy. Use that experience and use that judgment. First of all, don't walk into the lion's den with the bigger guy. Step out a little bit, invite the bigger guy to come in and miss a little bit, and counter with that right hook for the southpaw. That's one thing he can do. Also, Linton is very good at countering. So stay right there, slip the shot to the bigger man, and come right back with your own counters. You can see the left hand is low of green, so there's going to be opportunities to counter, especially with that right southpaw hook of Linton's. So you've done a terrific job this year. you got a few months now. It's our last show to rest a little bit. We took a vote. Everybody thinks you should have a speaking part. I agree. Please, the stage is yours. Well, thank you, Teddy. I had fun. I just hope I can hit back next year. That That's not going to happen. <laughs> that I can't help you with, the hitting back part. But definitely, we'll have fun again next year. Well, thank you. Nos vemos el próximo año. You're getting carried away already. <laughs> <laughs> You give them an inch, they take a mile. Scheduled for 10 rounds. And the other Ritter brother, Gerald Ritter, is the referee. Could have swore I saw Saul give a wink to the camera when okay, you described it as pretty cute. Your instructions. To obey my commands, protect yourself at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. These, hold on, Alan, come here. These trunks are a little high. Anything below here is going to be low. Now touch your gloves up and let's go to work. The ring experience sponsored by Just For Men Hair Color, and this is why Emmett Linton thinks that he will come out on top. He's been in the big spots before. He has fought 181 more pro rounds, but the other side of that is that he is in the autumn of his career. Round one. And according to Linton, also a former national amateur champion, he has had somewhere in the area of 323 amateur fights. A lot of experience in the corner of Linton. And you can see the size differential. Just a look at the two men. Linton just does not look like a super middleweight. And Green fills out that frame really, really well. He can get down to 160. And you heard him talk about earlier tonight the fact that that may be the chosen route if he wants to get a very good payday. There's sometimes there are different elements that wind up happening in a fight. One of those elements that, of course, we hope do not happen is Litton sometimes can get in there with his head. He's been involved in a lot of fights with head clashes. He's had two technical draws and a one no decision caused by headbutts inside. Litton has suffered himself a lot of damage or scar tissue over the right eye of Linton. Green is another guy who has not been shy to get inside with his head. So don't be shocked if we see some red before this night is over, caused by both men being in close with their heads. Just happened on May 13th with Emmett Linton and Robert Pushup Frazier. Frazier was cut on the forehead. Clash of heads came in the first round. And that was a no contest. Thus the inactivity we've seen out of Emmett Linton, only one round in the past 15 months. You know, a lot of guys would think that Green, being a bigger, younger guy, would like to get in close to take advantage of that size, but I think he's better on the outside. Green, not really an inside fighter, Joe. He does better when there's length, when there's separation, when he can catch somebody on the end of his punches. And you can see Green feels that way, too. Early on, he was pushing Linton off trying to get separation, trying to get a little room to use those longer arms to get extension on his punches. Second fight with the new trainer, John David Jackson. 
former top junior middleweight in the world for Alan Green. He's really liked what Jackson has brought to his camp. Green sometimes, you can see him complaining. Green sometimes, when he's in there with Linton, might have the experience that you may have had if you've spit into the wind. And it's come right back at you. Linton very good when you throw at him and making you miss and throw him right back at you. And that's exactly what Linton's been trying to do with Green. We're a pretty tight group here. It doesn't happen overnight. People have to learn that they can count on you. You know what I mean? All the yes, sir, I do. See how Army training gives you strength for now, strength for later at GoArmy.com. For most of you, he's a friend. Their greatest mentor. He knows how you think, he knows how you operate, and he will use that against you. He's now their prime suspect. Michael Douglas, Kiefer Sutherland, Eva Longoria, The Sentinel, Order Today. Drink responsibly. 21 and 0, Alan Green in the silver with black trim coming out for round number two against the veteran Emmett Litton. First southpaw challenge in the career of Alan Green. I'm going to go out on the line a little bit very early, obviously, just the beginning of the second round and say that the very talented Green has been balded early on by the very experienced southpaw Litton. Just a little bit, but he's gotten a little over anxious in spots. Right now, you can see him on the inside trying to use that size difference in close. And as long as he's in close, going to the right place, the best place you can go when you're the bigger man, downstairs to the body of the smaller man. No better way to show your advantage of size, Joe, when you're the bigger guy than to go downstairs to the smaller body. And you can see that he has done that well, landing 88%, 14 of 16. Stop. Here in the second round, it was a straight left hand from the southpaw Litton early on in the round that brought about the offensive attack of Alan Green. Double reason for Green tonight to go downstairs with Litton. One, he's the bigger man. The other is Litton, a good defensive fighter. Moves his head well, very slick in there. When a guy's moving his head well, it's good to go to the body. The head may move, but the body stays right there in front of you. You start banging that body, the head will stop moving. Well placed left hand to the body. Now a straight right hand on the inside. Larry Holmes was Upper around. Cut comes in. Larry Holmes was around when all those old timers would use that cliche. Kill the body, the head will follow. That's exactly what Green wants to do. He did a good job of it. The former heavyweight world champion, our in-studio guest analyst tonight. Here's a combination from Emmett Litton. Green goes right back to the body, but he got caught. Because he left something out there. You can't throw with Linton and not cover fast or move your head fast. You leave something out there after you throw with Linton and he'll come right back with the counters and make you pay. You cannot admire your work with Linton. He's a good counter puncher. When you throw with Linton, you better move after you punch, not wait for the receipt. Green waited for the receipt and he caught some leather. There's some blood over the shoulder of Green. It's from a split lip on Emmett Litton, and I believe it came from that uppercut on the inside, but he has had success in this second round, even with that pulsating bottom lip. You can see the size difference of Green, but in spots you can see also the experience and the slickness of the Southpaw Litton. Exciting second round. Hey, what are you guys looking at? Dots. dots. What kind of dots? Red ones. Can you talk to the dots? New pickup, 10 Spring Street. Can the dots talk back? Spring Street, roger that. Do it again. No, the dots have work to do. We don't agitate the dots. We don't agitate the dots. Who's agitating my dots? You agitating my dots?
The power to get things done with Nextel Walkie Talkies Plus GPS. Nextel, only from Sprint. Introducing Nextel's new multi-dimensional walkie-talkie phones. The new i580, the only camera phone built to military specifications to withstand rain, dust, and shock. It doesn't stop working until you do. And the new i670 with walkie-talkie and GPS navigation capability. The power to get things done with Nextel walkie-talkie phones. New phones start at just $49.99. Available only at Sprint or Nextel retailers. Call 800-NEXTEL-9. Nextel, only from Sprint. In the fight plan, we talked about the right counter hook of Linton with the low left hand of Green. Right there, you see the damage done by that right hook of Linton. There, you see the damage done by the right uppercut of the bigger Green on the inside against Linton. So Both men had their moments that round. Very good looking second round. Alan Green looking to get off here. He pushed with the left hand, ruled a slip by Gerald Ritter. A second round that included Alan Green being stunned by a right hook and cutting open the lip of Emmett Linton, and now a good pace to open up this third round. A good body shot by the bigger Green a moment ago. Green has been targeting that body of Emmett Linton. Linton, Linton coming in at a career high 166 pounds to take on this challenge against the top prospect among the super middleweights in the world. Usually you only need one good reason to go to a specific place in a fight. In this case, as we said earlier, Green had two good reasons to go to the body of Linton. One, he's the bigger man. You can take control going downstairs to the smaller man. And the other, Linton moves his head. Bang that body, the head will be easier to find. Even though Green has had moments early on on the inside as the bigger man, Joe, you can see he's not really a guy who's set up for a lot of fighting on the inside. He's a tall, sleek fighter, very athletic. Stop, stop, Does most of his work when there's separation. Stop. Even though Linton's smaller, he can handle himself on the inside pretty well with Green. Those shorter arms of Linton can serve him. He can get inside the long arms of Green. Green trying to bully the issue now, releases a combination. Litton tried to catch him in between punches, and they tie up. You see the experience right there of Litton. He traded places with Green. He was on the ropes. All of a sudden, he turned. He got Green on the ropes. Good test for the undefeated Alan Green, facing a 35-year-old veteran who's been in with better competition and has stayed active in the gym, even though he hasn't been staying active in the ring. Just missed with that straight left hand. If Green keeps missing with those shots and Linton keeps countering back, you'll see Green starting to get a little tentative, a little worried about letting his hands go, and then Linton can start to have moments. And the three. For some guys, a mustache or beard isn't just hair. It's a real part of who they are. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Introducing new True Color Formula Just For Men Gel. Penetrates coarse facial hair for a natural look in five easy minutes. So you'll always look like the real you. Her real dad. Her real man. Freak accident. Give me your hand! A call for help. My little girl has been taken. I'll find her. An island. This is private property. Where one man's search. Where is this girl? Will come to an end. Daddy. Hey! Nicholas Cage. <laughs> the Wicker Man. <laughs> Rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you on Friday Night Fights, presented by Just For Men Hair Color. Round four, the undefeated Alan Green has a lot to figure out against the veteran Southpaw, Emmett Linton.
Teddy Atlas's scorecard. Even third round. Litton took the first two rounds, 30 to 28. Let's now bring in Larry Holmes, the former champ, our guest analyst tonight in studio. Larry, you've worked with many fighters and you've seen the levels of progression. Alan Green now at 21 and 0. Is this a good spot for him against a veteran southpaw based on what you've seen through three rounds? Do you no. like this spot for him? No, I, I want him, I would like for him to move side to side and use the long arms that he has. But uh, I tell you, Lennon is doing what he has to do by going forward, putting the pressure on him. That southpaw style, he's got it going on right now. Right now, the youth and size of green against the style and the experience of Lennon. What do you like better, Larry? I think I know the answer. You like youth or you like experience? You like talent or you like experience? I like experience, I like the youth, I like it all. You said it all, but but I tell you what, these guys here, they're putting it on and they're both trying to win this fight, but I, I got to give the edge to Lynn because he got that awkward style because he is a softball fighter. So uh, I, I'm looking at him with the pressure that he's putting on. Good job, Larry Holmes, our studio analyst tonight. Glad to have him with us. The most dangerous Break. rounds Break. Stop punching. going into this fight for, for Linton in the corner and in the fighter's mind had to be the early rounds with the bigger, younger green, the very talented green. You would think once he gets past and he's on his way to getting past those early rounds and he starts building a little Watch work, you would have to think that if down the stretch, Stop. Stop. Would stop, be stop favoring Watch your the more Watch experienced your Linton, the man who's been 10 rounds or better 14 times. Green has been 10 rounds one time. You would think if Linton conducts himself well early on, and he's doing better than well right now, again, you would think down the stretch, that experience is going to make for a tough night for the young Green. Letting loose with a shoe shine on the inside. Getting a spark out of this crowd, but still Emmett Linton now confidently coming forward. Stop! Interesting Stop! main Stop! event. The challenge of the undefeated Alan Green. Live Tuesday, September 12th. America, are you ready to do it? With Emmett Smith, Monique Coleman, Jerry Springer, Vivica A. Fox, Joey Lawrence, Sarah Evans, Mario Lopez, Harry Hamlin, Shayna Mokler, Tucker Carlson, and Willa Ford. Let's do it. Dancing with the Stars, two-hour premiere, Tuesday, September 12th, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Pizza. For here to go? Delivery. Delivery? Yeah. Delivery. Lois! Here. Hey. They had a little captain in them because they always designated driver. Drink responsibly. Back in April, Alan Green had the toughest test of his career. He was wrecked in the third round against the journeyman Donnie McCrary, a former sparring partner. His chin really checked, his heart really checked. He got up off the canvas and won by TKO. This is a much different challenge tonight for Alan Green, the undefeated fighter in the silver. It is a veteran who has the tricks of the trade. He's a southpaw. He's skilled and he's determined. And he's ahead on Teddy Atlas's scorecard, stop, 40 to 37. Stop, you know, That's Emmett Lynn. One of the things that Green and his people thought they were sure of, or that they could count on coming into this fight, was that they would be stronger, that they would be able to hurt Lytton. So far, Green has not been able to really damage Linton. If he can't hurt Linton, how does that bode for him the rest of the night? Does he start to get a little discouraged? Does he start to panic a little bit and say, if I can't have the advantage in strength, in plain, pure athletic talent, 
where do I have an advantage? The other guy is a southpaw, and I know he has the advantage in experience. So does Green get discouraged? Does panic start to set in with the undefeated fighter? Emmett Litton, the aggressor here in this fifth round, coming forward again. Green tries to back him off. Lead right hand, that was right to the chest. Litton still dealing with that split lip. Happened in the second round thanks to an Allen Green uppercut. You know, the strength game is not working for Green. Where he thinks he has an advantage of being a stronger guy, then he has to make an adjustment. And that adjustment for me would be to the speed game. Getting outside, using those long arms. The tremendous former heavyweight champ Larry Holmes talked about. For Green to get outside, use that speed, use that youth, use those long arms, and adjust to that kind of fight. He may have to do that before it becomes too late where he's so entrapped into a power fight that it's too late to make the adjustment he needs to make to the speed and the outside fight. He may have to do that because inside the power fight right now is not carrying Green. The experience of Linton inside is carrying Linton. As we come to the halfway point, Emmett Litton is sitting in a position Alan Green never thought he would be. He's doing fine. End of five. That's it, don't go. What's that? Rabbit food? Business casual slacks? Chintz pillows? No more. Time to be a man again. And it starts in the shower. This gets you clean. And it doesn't dry your skin. Not dry. Nice. And it looks like an oil can. New Dial for Men body wash. Be a man. Take back the shower. <laughs> Former titleist J.D. Jackson with Alan Green. Don't, Let's don't listen in. Don't down here too much. You come in on one spot too much. Okay. All right? You put those hands up a little bit. Okay. You're trying to aim for that, that left hand that right in the middle for you. All right? Take a deep breath first. Don't worry about it. Get your body shot, man. <laughs> Thanks, son. It's good. Keep your hands up, all right, son? Keep boxing. Let's go. Keep boxing. Keep boxing. John Keep boxing. David nice Jackson. Move that head. Don't stay too long. Recently Keep trained Shane Mosley this year. Walk Led Bernard Hopkins to a win against Antonio Tarver. And Alan Green is an undefeated super middleweight prospect who he thinks the world of. But right now, they have to figure things out against a very determined Emmett Linton. Both these fighters have former world champions in their corner. You just talked about one of them, John David Jackson, the former junior middleweight champion of the world in the corner of Green. And of course, Johnny Bump is the former junior welterweight champion in the corner of Linton. And not only are they former world champions, both of them were southpaws. Let's bring in John David Jackson and get his thoughts as to what he is seeing with his charge, Alan Green. J.D., how do you see it? Well, you know, Alan's in control. Um, he needs to just stay a little more patient and, and keep boxing this guy. He came out early and they went to war a little bit, but um, the body shot, I think, slowed Emmett down a lot. Now Alan's taking the school and boxing a little bit, and uh, he'll probably be able to catch Emmett coming in. But, you know, it's very, um, Emmett's very determined right now, so it's a pretty good fight. John, I think you have two choices where you can try to take advantage of some things that Green has an edge in. Inside, of course, he's the bigger guy, but on the outside, he can be the quicker guy with those long arms. Where would you rather him be, inside or outside? Well, right now, because of Emmett's determination, I, I'd rather keep on the outside. He's using too much energy, spending too much energy trying to wrestle with this guy. When he should be just keep boxing him, like you said, the, the advantage he has on the outside, use that to his advantage. Don't, you know, unless he takes with a good shot, hit him outside, and you'll open up openings from the outside. I agree with you. Thanks, right. John. Thank you very much. It's an example of that wrestling that he talked about. So John David Jackson feels confident. You heard him talk about the work, the erosion being done by the body shots. But keep in mind, not going according to plan of Alan Green, who said he'd get rid of Emmett Litton between the fourth and sixth round. And you couldn't have a better guy that's delving out those instructions in the corner of the young Alan Green 
than John David Jackson, as we said, not only a former world champ, but a southpaw. He knows how to work against the southpaw. One of the things that experienced fighters do, Joe, an experienced fighter like Linton, what he does is he makes you doubt yourself. He makes you not sure of what you should be doing, of where you need to be. That might be the best thing that Linton has done so far. He's made Green not sure if he should be inside or outside. He's made Green stop, stop. doubt his identity in spots. Oh. A lot of the traits and characteristics and symptoms that go along many times with a veteran southpaw taking on a young undefeated prospect and it's happening tonight. It's time for the huge Ace Labor Day sale. Get a $5 mail-in rebate on every gallon of Ace Royal paint you buy, plus a four-piece brush set or a three-pack of Ace paint rollers. Both are free after mail-in rebate. This weekend only at Ace, the helpful place. Sale starts Friday. The hunt is on, and there's nothing like the thrill of the chase, that search for Miss Wright or Mr. Wright now. tally -ho! During the hunt, one must be well-groomed and armed with fresh breath. So most importantly, every good hunter must always carry dentine. That's the spirit. A lot can happen with a little dentine. Happy hunting. Friday Night Fights in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas ringside. Alan Green in his hometown trying to get to 22-0. There has been talk all summer long of potential big fights lined up for Wait. Alan Green. Is it too much too soon? Is Emmett Litton too much tonight? Four rounds to see where it goes. You can see Green, the last two rounds, making the adjustment, deciding he's more comfortable outside where he can use those long arms and keep separation with the more experienced Linton. Let's bring in the Watch former out, world Watch champion out. and the trainer of Emmett Linton, Johnny Bumpus. Johnny, what are you going to be telling Emmett for the stretch run of this fight? The stretch run is to keep that jab on. He got to keep that jab. Emmett's trying to knock him out instead of putting punches together. But I think we're going to get him before it's over with. He's going to land the bomb, trust me. Stop! Would you Wait. have said that before this Back fight up. started? Would you have been this confident in the seventh round? Did you think that would be the spot you'd be in right now? Yeah, yeah. I thought, I, I know Emmett is a very experienced professional fighter. He knows how to get away from shots. He takes a good shot, too, so. Johnny, do you yeah. like the way Green, for you, do you like the way Green is going inside with your guy? Would you rather your guy? Oh. Now he's hurt. Now well, let's the get size, to the action here. The size, the size just took over. Now the size advantage oh. showed itself oh. on the inside. Six. We'll let Johnny Bumpus Seven. get to work because his fighter, who is going along fine, just got damaged here in round number seven. And let's see if Alan Green can finish things here. Big left hand comes in. I just finished asking Johnny Bumpus, the trainer of Linton, if he liked his guy being inside with the bigger guy. Right now, what he wants to see, I would think, is for Linton to tie up. He did for a moment. He has to survive the last 45 seconds here. Did Green punch himself out? He did. Right. Gas right. tank just went to empty on Alan Green. This is where it's not just about physical, Joe. This is about the discipline of finding a way to make the choice to throw the punches even when your body doesn't feel like accommodating you. This is why you get up at 5 in the morning when you don't feel like getting up at 5 in the morning to run. Not because the air is fresher, but because you're forcing yourself to do something you don't like to do. Like you have to do now. Move your hands even though you don't feel like it. 
and Linton with a little rally here at the end of the seventh round. What a round here in Tulsa. You're doing beautiful. Man, if you'd have five more seconds, we'd have had enough. Look at the time. Take it. Put the water on. Where's the water at? Snip in through your nose. Pull it in through your nose. Rinse your mouth out real good. Rinse your mouth out real good. In it. Stay close. Try to stay close. Using your jab. But you gotta smoke that jab. The last round, you can see the damage done by the bigger green moving his hands on the inside. And finally, with the help of a punch and a little push, gets Linton down. There's the left hook that landed. Let's go, seconds. And then there's a right hand that sneaks in there. And then a left hook behind the head a little bit as Clinton was trying to get away. And with a little help from a little shove, Linton goes down and maybe a 10-8 round for Green. Round eight, Alan Green ran out of gas when he tried to close it up in the seventh. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 10-8 round. Litton still up though, 67-66, based on all his early work in this fight. Keep in mind, we are in Oklahoma, the hometown for Alan Green. And the crowd reacting time and time again to every flurry and every punch the undefeated prospect throws. Tried to go to the body there, was blocked, then the uppercut found its mark on the inside. In the second round, he split the lip of Emmett Clinton with that uppercut. Again, even though Green, the bigger man, we've been talking about it from the beginning, showed that advantage. Stop. And use that advantage the last round by being inside. You could also see that Green really not a guy that likes to work consistently inside. How about Emma Linton getting off here? He's got something left. Coming to the halfway mark of this eighth round. Good main event here on Friday Night Fights. Again, you can see the instinct of Green Joe right there. Even though the last round he did all his damage on the inside, just a moment ago, he took himself outside where he had separation to use those long arms and those quick hands. Again, Green getting separation where he's more comfortable. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, why is Green not busier? with those long arms on the outside. Part of that is because Linton gained respect defensively early on by doing that. Slipping shots. When you slip shots of your opponent, your opponent after a while is a little tentative about letting his hands go. He doesn't want to miss. He doesn't want to leave himself open for counters. And Linton has gained that respect and has served him well here from Green. You can see Green being a little tentative. Early on, Joe, he threw punches, he missed, stop, and he's stop, worried stop. about that happening again. Box. It's making him keep his hands in his pockets, and it's allowing Linton, after a knockdown in the last round, to come back in this round and have a very good round. Damn it, Linton. Trying for the upset. Two rounds to go from Tulsa. Here's to men. To guys who want to take longer drives with fewer pit stops. To guys who want to spend less time in the men's room and more time fishing. And here's to Flomax. It's approved to treat male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also called an enlarged prostate. In one week, Flomax may help symptoms like going often, going urgently, weak stream, frequently waking up at night to go. For you, Flomax could make a difference in one week. Ask your doctor if symptoms are from BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden decrease in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result.
For more information, call 877-4-FLOMAX. Ask your doctor about Flomax. Flomax could make a difference in one week. In the seventh round, Emmett Witten was knocked down. In the eighth round, he had a 16 to 10 connect advantage against the undefeated Alan Green. Round number nine now, scheduled for 10. Punch track numbers in real time. Let's look at the total punches. Litton throwing 482, landing 118. You know, stop, early on stop. in the fight, I made the Throw analogy it. that fighting Litton sometimes is like the experience of spitting in the wind. It comes back and smacks you in the face. I think that experience has gotten Green a little tender. There were many close rounds early in this fight, rounds that were hard to judge. The way they have gone on Teddy's scorecard has lit up 77-75. Green has not spit in the wind, but he has thrown punches and hit wind with Linton tonight. And when that's happened, he's left himself open for counters by Linton. And I think that's made Green just tentative enough to make for a fight that has been this close and this team tightly contested by the older 35-year-old Linton. When we talked to Alan Green in his preparation for this fight, he saw two scenarios. Either he would get rid of him between the fourth and sixth round, and that was what he put forth, or he would have Linton hurt all night, and Linton would go into survivor mode. Neither one has happened. That was behind stop, the head. Stop. Go hit him behind the head. Right now, they're short on a good warning Box. by the referee that taking charge immediately before he could get any more out of hand. But good work on the inside by the experience and the shorter arm, Linton. Even though Green has those quick hands and that power, Linton with those short arms has done some good work inside. Stop punching. Break. Step back. Green tried to chop him with that left hook. See the blood still coming from that split lip of Emmett Linton. And of course, you can also see in spots a little bit of the, free, <laughs> the lack of decision by Green. Do I go inside or outside? This last round, he's decided to stay outside with those long arms a little bit more. They think you're an assassin. I am being framed. He has one shot. Who sent you? To expose the truth. Hold your weapon. The traitor is still out there. He's going down. The Sentinel. Own it today. Go ahead. Push it. It's a new HP notebook. It's got Intel Centrino dual mobile technology. So you could take it pretty much anywhere. I'm gonna take it over here. Staples makes technology easy. Do more with a powerful HP Pavilion notebook. Just $949.99. Only at Staples. That was easy. Afternoon. Give me your hand! A child has vanished. Now a cop must uncover a secret. Something bad is about to happen. Behind a ritual that kills Nicolas Cage, the wicker man. With PG-13, now playing. The undefeated prospect, Alan Green, he scored a knockdown in the seventh round. But other than that, Emmett Linton hasn't gone away at all. The veteran southpaw still very much in it as we start this tenth round. And he comes out charging with a right hook. The final instructions given to Alan Green from John David Jackson were be smart, be smart, he'll be desperate. Teddy Atlas's scorecard through nine, 86 85. Linton. Close fight, I think, would have to be admitted by anybody watching this fight. 
Let's not forget we are in the home territory of the undefeated Green. But I will say this, Teddy. You and I looked at each other after a lot of the early and middle rounds of this fight, and they were very close rounds that, yes, we're in Tulsa, so maybe the benefit of the doubt leaves Green's way. All the way back. We will find out. A moment ago, Linton did some good counterpunching as Green jumped in or fell in a little bit. Green, every once in a while, will not negotiate that distance real well. Instead of jabbing and using his long arms on the outside, once in a while, he becomes that. A guy who's indecisive, maybe because of the experience in the southpaw style of Linton, and he falls in. He jumps in, he rushes. And those are spots right there where Linton can counter him and get three shots at Green coming forward, giving up his height, giving up his size. They break. Who's willing to work on the inside? Watch when there's separation here. Watch for Linton to do some counter punching if Green continues to fall in. Stop! Stop! Break! There's gonna be some separation. Now watch, does Green work outside or does he rush in? He rushed in that time but did not pay a price. Break him up! You could see a little bit of a fall in once again by Green. Okay, stop but punching. that time, once Break. again, Linton did not pull the trigger with those hands. There he does. Green falls in a little bit once again. And you can see Linton stop. finishing up this fight and this round very well. So Flory there. And now tied up on the inside. Coming to the final 10 seconds. Both men digging down. Both men showing their work. Very good fight. Tremendous effort from the 35-year-old Emmett Litton. Alan Green, he damaged Litton. How impressive was he? We'll hear what the judges thought after this. Something is real, Ain't you know it. Like the real thing, baby. Introducing new like Just for Men. Thing. Its new true color formula targets only gray. Like Easy as shampooing for a natural look that is real. So real, real to the eye, real to the touch. Real where it counts. So new true color Just for Men. Hey, watch this. Clear. With the Emerald Club, you can bypass the counter, choose your own car, and get an e-receipt. National. Green means go. Drink responsibly. their nation and humiliated their best fighters but only one man had the courage to defy an empire from the producers of hero and crouching tiger hidden dragon jet lee in his final martial arts epic fearless ready pg-13 starts september 22nd we are back in Tulsa to wrap up Friday night fights on the heels of a good main event between Alan Green and Emmett Linton. The punch track fight recap is presented by Just For Men Hair Color. Doesn't get much closer than that, does it? 153 punches landed for Green, 151 punches landed for Linton. Teddy Atlas's scorecard. Of course, the seventh round, the highlight of the night for Alan Green. A lot of close rounds early on. Linton was very game. What does M. Mark Biero have in his hand? He reveals it to us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Bobby Higdon scores about 
97-92. Judges David Sutherland and Jerry Griffin both see it 98-91, all to the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Alan Winkins I think the scores are a tad deceiving. Personally, I think Green won the fight, but Witten was in there all night long, and 98-91 just doesn't jive with me, although there were many close rounds early on. Alan Green does get the 22nd win of his career. Teddy, your thoughts? I guess when you live in Oklahoma, it's good to fight in Oklahoma, especially when you're fighting an experienced fighter like Linton, who's going to test you and who's going to really, you know, take you down the stretch and show your worth. Uh, very close fight. You could go either way, but no doubt that I think a little bit of home cooking when you look at those kind of scores. But hey, this is our last show of the year. Um, we're going to have a few months off. We're going to come back, of course, in a few weeks with the contender final, but we're going to be off about four months. I know you. I would like to take the time first to thank all the people there in the truck that allow us to come out here. They do the hard work. They let us do the fun work. And then most of all, I'd like to thank you at home, the fans, for tolerating us every week, <laughs> allowing us to come into your living room. I know this guy's easy to let come into your living room, but letting me come in, that's not so easy. So we love you. And... Um, we never forget that it's about you, that what we do is allowed because of you. Mega dittos there, and thank you to our families for all the Road Warrior travels we have and dealing with that back at home. So, Alan Green, now 22 wins and still a goose egg in the loss column. Let's send it back to our studio and Robert Flores. Back here with former heavyweight champion Larry Holmes. Just a few more minutes with the champ. And uh, what, what do you do now? I know that you have a variety of interests out of the ring, but uh, what does Larry Holmes do now that uh, you're well into your retirement? One of the things I do is what the heck were he thinking? <laughs> it's a TV show that I have in the local TV station down there with two dice doctors, uh, Jared and... Uh, can't think of his other name real quick, but I have to. <laughs> but doctors. you're the star. But I'm not the star. They the star. <laughs> they analyze what the people do when they when they shouldn't do it. You know, yeah. like, why did a guy run into a wall with a motorcycle without a helmet? What was he thinking? Is, is TV work something that uh, you enjoy doing? I mean, would, would yeah. you like to do more of it? Yeah, I like to be here with you every night. You know, but I like to get paid. <laughs> well, considering this is the season finale, we we'll might have to wait for uh, okay. for the, us to come off a hiatus. But uh, we certainly appreciate you joining us here for the about past couple of hours here on Friday Night Fights and uh, the season finale. And thanks a lot. Thank you. ESPN been great. They've always been great, and they're going to keep on being great. Y'all keep watching ESPN. That's former heavyweight champion Larry Holmes. It's the season finale of Friday Night Fights. As the guys mentioned, Joe and Teddy will be back in 2007. But what a what a way to end 2006. A couple of exciting fights. We saw Emmanuel Augustus with a knockout win and then another uh, exciting win for Emmanuel Green as he improves to 22 and 0. College football weekend continues with a couple of games on.